you know, as an introduction, there's a lot more information that we can um, go into a lot more detail on, on each uh, topic on its own. But what we're trying to show is how they can work better together. In, in order to establish that, um, this section two is to talk about how some of these um, these methods, when when we implement, essentially we're not getting the best out of them. Um, so it's not that we're setting ourselves up for failure, but essentially we are not getting the optimum result all of the time. So um, let's look at a few reasons why. The causes of lower success, as I like to put it here, um, lots of people in the industry lose their focus when, when they're implementing something like a location-based management system. And we, if we don't trust the new uh, planning and process, then it's difficult and we lose focus. Uh, essentially, running parallel processes means that we have something else that is going to take our time. So we would like to, to try and make people commit to a, um, a fully fledged and um, sole process to running location-based management. People are fearful. Uh, they're reluctant because there's more data required. And it, essentially, it's the um, structured tool that allows you to create the, or, or to um, collect the data and put it into place. But it requires human input still. We, we can't get away from that. The, the data collection process um, can be pretty difficult if we don't have the, the correct human inputs um, and the right process in order to collect those inputs. Um, from the specialty trades point of view, not, not everyone um, in pre-construction and, and when we're planning the milestones for later completion of work, we're not going to have a full operational understanding of how some of those specialty trades would like to complete their work. So, that can sometimes cause us problems. The traditional implementation of a system, uh, a lot of people are used to doing it one way. And even though the system lends itself much more to the, the, the pull planning, it can still be used as a, as a push planning, push control tool. Uh, lots of process changes required. So it's not just a, uh, a traditional um, technique that can be slightly morphed. It's something that requires quite a lot of change and it's something that um, you know, can cause a problem if people are uh, very traditional and, and unlikely to want to change some of their existing processes. The, um, even when we implement location-based management uh, system, the production problems that it highlights, you know, there's loads of data there. It's, it's incredibly data rich, but there's no um, social process necessarily to be able to review that data. So some production problems can be hidden um, quite easily and, and, and people avoid things. Um, so it's that lack of the social process uh, that means that it can be difficult to uh, implement the control actions and to ensure that we're continually course correcting um, areas where we have been flagged that there are potential production problems. The Data mining as well and, and trying to reuse the information. As I mentioned, there's lots of valuable data, um, the production data that can be used for future projects or future areas of the same project. Um, lots of the time, people don't have systems in place to, in order to be able to mine that and, and reuse it. So a lot of the time, it's recreated. So th there are um, no uh, examples that I can think of that would say we haven't had benefit, but if you're looking to try and really achieve a, a, a very high level of success in implementing, um, some of these are the challenges that we would like to try and overcome. So that's from the location-based management system side. Let's take a look at the last planner side. Um, we, we know that push controlling systems dominate, uh, so again, we've got this traditional thinking. Uh, we we do, unfortunately, a lot of the time start with suboptimal um, data. So the starting targets can be uh, unoptimized and, and um, uneven. Um, the systems that we have used to be able to generate some of the starting data uh, provide us just these uh, windows of opportunity and not explicit working. So it's uh, areas where we could be 
um, better prepared in, um, in defining uh, the targets up front, as we, as we mentioned. And then the location-based nature, we really sometimes are not able to, as clearly as we would like, as clearly as we need, um, be able to define the location breakdown structure um, and the workspace in which we're going to carry out the activities. Resources, um, generally we, we've got the resource movement between different locations, but we're, we're missing the flow. Um, the continuity between locations is essentially the most important part. So without the uh, physically defined locations, understanding where those resources are going to flow is, is going to be pretty difficult. Um, generally, so I, I put Parkinson's law on there, and uh, Parkinson's law is about um, work expanding to fill the time that's available for it to be completed. So uh, it, essentially, the demand on resource it will, it will um, certainly match the supply. So what we tend to see is that the demand for resource will expand um, to match the supply of the resource, but the reverse is not really usually true. Um, we don't see any um, anything to show us that we're likely to uh, provide a, a duration and um, uh, people are going to um, be able to carry out that in a, a lot shorter time frame. Generally what happens is that, as I, as I said, it, it's um, expanding to fill the available time. Um, certainly I know that from uh, running to um, complete this presentation for, for today. Um, Tell all our secrets, Clive. <laughs> So, um, only weekly planning. Only weekly planning, we're looking at um, just part of the system being implemented. So, when we have a system, the last planner system, if we only implement just part of that, the weekly planning part, um, then you know, it's not the system that's being implemented. So, um, having a three-legged stall and, and, and just having two legs, um, it, it just doesn't work. So, missing um, that information and missing the, uh, the um, structure is pretty important, but um, sometimes people just do part of the process and, and believe that that's going to um, be successful on its own. Um, no connection there, I've mentioned just saying we don't generally link between master schedules, uh, phase schedules, look aheads and, and weekly work plans, so that disconnection can cause us um, some problems and um, trying to tie together lots and very, very detailed information uh, can be challenging. And then, really, last plan, uh, missing that, that um, technical system for forecasting to be able to have uh, better production metrics and um, use that for the look-ahead planning. So, um, in, in general, these are some of the reasons why um, I'm sure that if you have implemented, you'll have um, some of your own reasons. but. Um, this is some of the, the uh, areas that I have I've experienced. 